I was reading this. Uh, so apparently in Shameless, the, tri the triangle tattoo you have is your real tattoo, correct? Yeah, 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 right here, yeah. And the reason I wanted to ask you that is because you, you clearly brought something from your real life into the character that you played. So I was wondering, did you bring anything from your real life into Josh in the rental? Is there anything of you in there specifically kind of like that? You know, it's it's interesting. I mean, uh, you, it's, it's funny you mentioned the tattoo. I, I did try to come up, I, I've got this buddy, um, my buddy Josh Goldberg, who I grew up with, is a, is a really wonderful artist, and and um, I got to work with him. Uh, I had talked to Dave about about Josh having kind of multiple tattoos, but but I wanted to uh, uh, design my own tattoos for him with my real life friend Josh. Um, huh. So we kind of came up with all these ideas, and and I tried to kind of like, you know, maybe integrate some of my stuff, and and then my friends like artistic work and. And we all kind of tried to find something that worked. And um, and then, unfortunately, I showed the tattoos to Dave. And he was like, I think it's a little <laughs> bit too much. Um, what were they? So, Can I ask what they were? I'm trying to think. Yeah, it, it was um, it was like a kangaroo with punching gloves that I really, really loved. That was like kind of like a, based on this old Everlast ad. Um, yeah. And... Uh, th there was another kind of like scrappy, I forget. It was like another animal, a cute animal, like a rabbit or something like that, getting ready for a for a fight or something like that. But he, he didn't dig them. So what I like about that, though, is the idea that you're putting so much thought into the character and kind of why they would have certain tattoos or, you know. So I guess, I, mean, I guess this is a natural trans, trans, you know, going into the next question is, how yeah. did you decide that you were going to keep the triangle? Um, and, and how did you mentally say to yourself, okay, this is, so I'm playing Lip on the show. I'm Jeremy yeah. in real life. Why does Lip have the same tattoo as Jeremy? Did you, do you actually go into that? No, I, I appreciate your, your, your question, but it's a really lame answer I have for this. So pretty much the, the triangle tattoo I got was for a couple friends. I got it when I was really young. I was like 17 and it was done very poorly. Um, so it's very raised. So I went to shoot uh, the pilot for Shameless and pretty much it was just a pain to cover. They were like, it's so raised makeup, no matter what you do to it, you pretty much see it. Um, oh. So we ended up asking the tattoo artist if I could just have his work on my body. Um, so yeah, it's uh, unfortunately not that deep. It's just, um, it's that it was very difficult to cover. So Lip ended up with, with the tattoo as well as myself. So you don't even like build in why Lip would have it. It's just more of just like, that's the whole, and that's so interesting to me. It's so, yeah. like, there's a great scene in Shameless. I was, my wife and I were discussing the, the similarities kind of between Lip and the character you play here. There's some aspects that do kind of flow into it, but there's a sure. great scene in Shameless when you're holding the baby in the tub and the tattoo is re pretty, pretty relevant. So it's, it's, it's definitely yeah. part of his character, which I found interesting. I originally had spoken to Dave Franco about the film and he was talking about the idea that originally he was going to play the part of Josh. He decided to direct the movie and obviously you came on. So knowing that, did he already build out ideas for the character that you guys could have conversations with? Or did you just get to run with the character on your own? Or did you get to pull from what he maybe already worked on? I, I think, I mean, I, I don't think Dave told me that until <laughs> we, were, we were shooting for a while. Um, so I don't know if that was on purpose or not, that he had kept it quiet. Um, but he certainly kind of let me uh, run with it. Yeah, he, he let me do... Um, he let me do my thing. I mean, he, he was very generous. So you have, you know, you have a character here in the rental. Um, there's the beauty of what Dave did in this movie is, is essentially messing with perceptions and manipulating audiences in a very interesting way, especially in that opening shot with Dan Stevens, where we think him and Sheila are the ones who are dating. And then it pulls out sure. that they're actually coworkers. I thought it was a really cool way that they played with that. Um, but your character has, we, we hear very small details about his backstory, that there was a, a fight he got into at one point. And those all factor in later on because Dave builds character for 30 minutes before anything kind of crazy goes down, which I absolutely love because it makes the horror and the thrills much more emotionally immersive and effective for an audience member. Um, so yeah. do, uh, th those ideas of those things you build into him because your character, the morals that he's kind of going through, you, I, you, I root for him. Uh, and obviously there are things that bad that happened in his past. There are things that are bad that are happening in, in, in the present in this film. How do you find that balance of 
I don't, I don't know if it's as conscious as maybe I'm thinking it is, where we as an audience care for characters as they're going through bad situations and we want them to come out good, even though they may have done some bad things in the past. Is there, is there a mm. way that you, I, I don't know how you do that as an actor, and I, I guess that's why you're great at what you do, but I find oh. that to be such a fascinating thing. How do you create empathy for characters maybe going through terrible situations? Well, first, thank you. That's, that's a really nice compliment. Um, and I, I think, you know, I think it's just because that's the way I feel about, you know, when, when I read, um, when I read the script, I, I kind of, I just kind of fell for Josh. I found him to be kind of like uh, this very like tragic screw up. Um, but I, I was rooting for him. You know, I, I thought maybe he was, um, he was on his way to some sort of self improvement. He, yeah he was clearly dating this, this, this woman who was way out of his league, but he was so in love with her. And I think, you know, it was really important to him to impress his brother. And I think it always has been, and, and he's never really gotten that like approval or acceptance from his brother. And, and, um, and I think that's, that's, that's what he was trying to do. That's what he would have gone on to, to do. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think, I think, you know, I really cared for the guy, so, Me so I'm too. glad that. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm I'm glad that that you know. Yeah. That's what I found so interesting is like, like I, I kept like latching onto him. That's why I reached out to interview you because I was talking to my wife about it. I'm like, I, your performance, it was just like, I just, I rooted for this guy, even though I didn't really know much about him. I spent 88 minutes with the guy, but I was like rooting for him because you, you oh, build man. so much raw intensity and immersion into the character. Um, when you have a 90 minute span to do a character like that versus 10 years of shameless. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, there a, is there a conscious thing in your mind where you think about, okay, I need to fit an entire arc that I could have done in 10 years in shameless yeah. into an 88 minute film. Is there a different approach to processing how his arc will play out because you only have 88 minutes? Yeah, I mean, so there's, there's nice things about both of those, um, like building a character in, in those environments. So, so on shameless, I've had forever, you know, I've, yeah. I've grown um, with lip, I've changed with lip, my, my perspective and opinion of lip has changed, obviously, mm. as I've played him. Um, but, you know, with lip, it, it's open ended, you know, I still don't know where the period is for lip, mm. um, which is really exciting, because I kind of get to like mess around with a lot of different stuff, um, and kind of take some some chances. But I've also found it frustrating, I think, at times because, you know, I might think one thing about Lip and a writer might think the other. With a movie, you've got your beginning, middle, and end. You know yeah. exactly what you're, 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 you're dealing with. Um, it's kind of just like, uh, it's easier to, to create the full narrative, I think, because you, you do have that period at the end of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You said something really interesting just now, which is actually a question I wanted to ask you about how a character can change you or you can change a character or your perspective can, like the way you're thinking about a character could be different now than it was 10 years ago. And now I actually yeah. wanted to ask you that, like as you play someone for 122 episodes or however it's been, uh, and then yeah, you know, we yeah. have one more season left, does, do, does it, is it harder to shake him when you play him more, when you go home, and, and I know, I'm not trying to ask like a method acting question. I know some right, actors right. say they, they leave their work at home when they go home, but yeah, I yeah. got to imagine that when someone seeps into your life that heavily, mm. is, is there, is there a, a, like a method you use to turn him off when you go home? Like, I feel like he's been such a big part of your life. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it's, um, it's not something that, you know, after a long day of work, I have to turn off, but I do think just because, you know, for half of my year for the past 10 years, I've kind of, you know, I've been thinking about him. I mean, more often than that, really, I'm kind of always thinking about him because I know I'm going to go back. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, he's always on my mind. Um, mm. And I'm sure that, you know, the character has, uh, has seeped into me um, in ways that'll, that'll never, you know, really, really go away. Um, but I am, I am, I'm excited, but also nervous at, at, at kind of my emotional state for when, for when, yeah, we, we eventually do kind of, uh, 
uh, say goodbye to the show and the world and, and, and to our, you know, respective characters and stuff. I think, uh, yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a tough day for sure. The score in this movie is brilliant. I was telling uh, Dave Franco that it, it reminded me of like a heartbeat and it kind of like, I, as mm. the film was going, I actually started wondering, is that my heartbeat or is that the film's score? Very similar. Oh, interesting. Uh, and I felt like, cause that, to me, like he built such an amazing suspension of disbelief. And I was just inter interested to know score, he uses score as a leading character. And I love when yeah. filmmakers use score that way. But the score is generally added later in post or the composer comes in in post, but it does affect the way we feel in your scenes as an actor. Um, yeah. So I, I always wanted to ask this question because when you finally see your performance set to a score, how mm -hmm. does that feel? Like in the sense of like you, you performed it on that day, it without yeah. the music there, and then you yeah. see it put to music and cut together. Does it does, does it change at all the the way you thought the scene went in your mind versus the way it's then on screen? Does it feel different to, to feel score added? Yeah, I mean, I would say ninety five percent of the time it enhances yeah. the the perform like like as an audience member, um, you know you whatever, I'll be on set and watching the dailies of a scene I'm in and I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know, it seems kind of static, I don't really know um, if that's working, if this is working. But then, yeah, if you find um, um, some great people to go ahead and do uh, 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 do do the music and, and cut it together just right, I think it just helps. It just helps kind of prop us up, yeah, for sure. Forgive me if this is a question you've answered a million times before, I'll just talk to my wife about it. Um, so I know mm. that Shameless is based on the British show. The character in the British show is also called Lip. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've answered this or if the, or if the show has specifically, I don't remember, it was, it was years ago, but in mm -hmm. the earlier episodes, the Lip name, because um, there's a, there's a yeah. great moment early, like in one of the seasons where you tell someone, like someone calls you Philip and you go, let's just, just call me Lip. Let's just, let, let's just stay in this, you know, you, in the right. formality of that. What, what story do you have in your mind, or if there was one written about why he goes by that name specifically? And if it's in the show, I apologize, I just couldn't remember specifically, but is there no. a story behind that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a specific one, but um, it's pretty much just like a turn of freight, like, like, you know, like he's such a smart ass, he gives a lot yeah. of lip. Um, <laughs> so I think that, that that has always been, yeah, the, the case why he's been called lip, he's just, um, he's just always been kind of a punk. And, uh, and I think it's probably, you know, a nickname that Fiona um, probably gave him when he was, you know, a kid. Yeah. Hmm. And so as you go into something like the rental, and there are these some some similar strands between the characters, uh, not 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 too similar, but there are aspects, I feel like that you could look at them and go, all right, some of that some of lit may be in Josh. Is, is yeah, that, yeah. Does that hit you on set at all? So as you're in the middle of a scene in the rental, does does that come to mind or is, is it a completely separate process? No, I mean, I I think when I was reading the script kind of before I got to work on it very much, like when Dave sent it to me, I definitely saw like a couple parallels in the character. Yeah. Um, but then, I mean, once you've kind of like done your prep and you're in this place and you're around these other people, I find like any other work kind of like, you know, slips away, which is really mm -hmm. nice. I mean, especially doing something like this, you know, it was a really small crew, really small cast. Um, we're shooting in this very small town in Bandon, Oregon, where there's really not much to do. Obviously very beautiful, but, but very small. So it was really nice. It, it was really easy, I think, at least for me, I'm sure, I don't want to speak for other cast members, but I'm sure it was a similar experience for them. Um, it was easy to get lost, you know, in, mm. in, in, in the narrative of the story and, and in our characters because, um, you know, um, I feel like we just felt so far away from everything we knew, you know. As you've been home during this time period, I feel like the times that we're living in the news is affecting all of us, obviously, very emotionally. And I'm very interested yeah. to know how it's affecting you as an artist. Um, have you found yourself looking for different types of projects now or um, thinking in a different headspace about what you want to do performance-wise moving forward? Has this shifted you in regards to your artist? elements at all i mean I, it's probably something you can't pinpoint because we're all still going through it but sure do you sure. find yourself wanting to do different types of things after this i mean yeah i i i think you know i think at the beginning of this 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 time you know in mid-march um i 
kind of what I was watching and stuff was stuff that I, I think that I enjoyed watching when I first became interested in film. I was kind of like looking for, for, um, for like comfort, kind of like comfort film food. Um, yeah. And then since then, you know, I haven't worked in a while. We, we were supposed to start shooting Shameless right around that same time when everything kind of shut down. And, and, um, and so I haven't worked in, and I was trying to just get creative and, and feel a little bit more inspired. And, and when I started acting, my, my goal was kind of to do theater and I studied in school. And, and, and so what I did and what has been helpful is kind of, I just ordered a bunch of plays that I used to really love in high school, though I think try and like cool. jumpstart that, um, that, that passion that I had, you know, 10, 10 11 years ago. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure if that exactly answers um, yeah. your question. I, I don't know what the future holds necessarily, but, but that's certainly something that during this time has kind of kept me, uh, kept me going is, is, is reading, reading these plays. Yeah. And plays and stage give you a live audience for you to feed off of as an actor. And I've always found that to be amazing. My wife and I, we go to Broadway sometimes and you see these amazing performances, but the energy of the room really feeds into the stage production as well. And I was just interested to know, like, do, when you're acting on a stage versus acting on a movie set, mm -hmm. um, is there a, like, do you, do you find yourself adjusting at all when you're on stage to the audience or is that something you can you block out or like do you is there a difference for you performance wise when you have an audience there versus not an audience yeah I mean I think sometimes I feel like sometimes on stage not that I've done a great deal of it but I feel like sometimes on stage you can kind of feel if you're not bringing it huh um yeah so I I think I've I've kind of like felt that but I've been like I'm losing some of the people in the back I need to kind of you know huh. um step it up a little bit but you know I don't know like I, I don't find them that different I mean even though on a film or television set you know you're 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 surrounded by by people who have a common goal you're surrounded by your crew and your directors and everybody um they're not necessarily I mean they're not audience members they're they're trying to hold you up but um but I feel the same way. I feel maybe it's just like an insecurity, but I always feel like I'm trying to, uh, you know, like impress even our, uh, our, our boom operator. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm always <laughs> trying to, uh, to, to perform for, for, for everybody. <laughs> um, all right, last two things I'll ask you and I'll let you go. Um, returning to work, uh, you know, the idea of going back to filming and doing movies and TV shows again uh, during this time, is that a concern in the sense of like, I, I know we're working out different ways to do it, uh, different productions, quarantining casts for certain periods of time, but yeah. you, know, you have a family and, and I, I just wonder like, does that, is that something that is on your mind in the sense of like, okay, I want to get back to work, but I also don't want to endanger myself, my family, my friends. And like, is that something, is it hard to have that balance now? Because I know you, you probably want to act again. I'm sure you do. Sure. And I just yeah. wonder like how, how, how that balance in your head. Yeah. I mean, I mean, first of all, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky, you know, like we're my, my wife and, and our baby, like we're, we're going to be okay. We can kind of like stay at home for a long time. We've got some cushion, like we're, we're going to be okay. Um, so, so, you know, I, what I'm concerned about more, you know, specifically for the jobs that were like shameless would be the next thing I do whenever we can go back. Um, you know, my concern is more for, for some of our crew and stuff who, um, mm -hmm. you know, might not have the same, uh, cushion and also are like, you know, prob older dudes, you know, who, who've been around for a really long time. Um, and so going back to work is a bit more dangerous for them um so i'll i'm happy like yes i can't wait to get back to acting um but um i also want to wait until it's safe as it can be um but i also don't want to wait so long that uh you know that these crew guys are really stressing about paying rent and mortgage and all that stuff so it's i mean you know we're in a really tough spot as you know as everyone knows it's so unprecedented. All right, so I'll end on this. You, you said something earlier in the interview about uh, comfort films, films that you uh, started watching early on in the sure. pandemic. Uh, I was just yeah. interested in what those films were for you uh, from a comfort standpoint, like films that you 
like a warm blanket almost, like a movie you put yeah, on yeah, to feel yeah. better. And then I guess a, a second part of that question would be, um, I've, you know, through watching your performance in the rental, and obviously through Shameless, you know, you have a very deep emotional element to your performances. And I wonder, was there a certain actor or performance you saw at a younger age by a certain actor that really kind of ignited that in your mind that you wanted to tell these stories, these very emotional stories? I guess first question was more of the comfort films yeah. and I, then we'll end on that one yeah 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 the comfort films yeah I mean I think you know um when I was like 13 14 15 I think that that's when I discovered Scorsese so I was yeah. watching Raging Bull for the first time um you know Goodfellas it's when I discovered the Coen Brothers so Miller's Crossing is one of my one like, of the greatest movies favorites. ever man so great and just Dude. like it makes me feel so like warm and con there's just something very soothing about it um and then yeah like paul thomas anderson i think i discovered around the same time and um so it was like all these all what's these your favorite guys. pta movie what's your favorite paul thomas anderson i'm a phantom thread guy randomly even though i think boogie nights might be his best I, movie but i love yeah. phantom thread man so boogie boogie nights was the first one i saw so i think it's always going to be way up there um oh my god yeah, william man. h macy's wonder in that movie Bill. when yeah, yeah, he yeah. goes into the bedroom and then comes yeah, back man. out that is one of the greatest wonders yeah. ever oh yeah amazing ever. and shout out to um i think it's his birthday today the late great philip seymour hoffman he that scene with him and mark Wahlberg when he tries to kiss him like oh that's my just god like yeah the most heartbreaking stuff so i mean that'll go to i was gonna say someone else but i mean philip seymour hoffman that scene oh my god so heartbreaking um but then i think another guy i really love to watch was is still sean penn and i, I saw this movie isn't she lovely um when i was when i was pretty young and it's, it's a it's it's a pretty wild wild movie um <laughs> yeah. but he gets to play two characters pretty much because there's a big time jump um and yeah, I was just, I was, I was, I'm, I mean, I've always been so impressed with him. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you reach out to these filmmakers? Like, 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 because you're working in the business, like, I mean, like the Coen brothers, for example, like Raising Arizona, Miller's Crossing. I mean, I, I'm a massive Roger Deakins fan. So I, I, I'm obsessed yeah. with that, that world of filmmaking as you became like as you did more and more performances in shameless were you able to have you ever geeked out with any of these people have you ever <laughs> been able to like reach out and go oh my god i love uh miller's crossing i love the coen brothers like have you ever had that opportunity i, I haven't i haven't met any of the directors i have met sean penn and i oh. was like um i was at a friend's birthday and he was there and he had seen me in homecoming and he paid me like a a really great compliment Wow. But I'm awful at like, <laughs> like I go too far the other way. Like I pretended like I didn't know who he was, you know what I mean? I was like, I couldn't tell him I'm such a huge fan. I was just like, oh, thanks man. Appreciate it. And then kind of like walked away. Um, so I, 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 I need to figure that out. Um, <laughs> yeah.